The Children's Place is proud to support Reading Rainbow. A place to grow. The Children's Place. Reading Rainbow is also made possible by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Reading Rainbow I can go anywhere Friends to know and ways to grow Reading Rainbow I can be anything Take a look, it's in Hi. I just love nighttime. It's so peaceful and calm. There's something magical that happens when the last streaks of sunlight fade, the stars begin to glitter, and the moon, all silvery and beautiful, rises high in the sky. When darkness falls, there's a famous night animal that spreads its wings and flies out to feed. It's called the flying fox, but it isn't a fox at all. In fact, it's a bat. Like most bats, flying foxes hang upside down, sleep during the day, and wake at night hungry as can be. And while many bats look for insects to eat, flying foxes, sometimes called fruit bats, prefer fruit. They think there's nothing quite like a ripe fig to really sink their teeth into. Sometimes they like to pluck one off to eat on the ride home. Besides eating fruit, flying foxes poke into flowers to lick nectar they get all covered with pollen. They carry the pollen to the next flower they visit, and that's how they help the plants reproduce. The more they eat, the more they help flowers and plants grow. got this great book about a fruit bat. It should be here so Ah, here it is. One night, this baby bat gets lost and her whole world is turned upside down. The book and the bat are called Stella Luna. Stella Luna, written and illustrated by Janelle Cannon. Read by Anne Jackson. In a warm and sultry forest, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby, Stella Luna. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for fruit to eat. One night, an owl swooped down upon the bats knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were useless, and down she went into the forest below. The dark tangle of the branches caught Stella Luna. She wrapped her wings about her, clutched a twig with her feet, 
and trembled with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer, and down she dropped again. Flump! Stella Luna landed in a nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly hung out of sight below the nest. What was that? Shh, here comes Mama with food. Stella Luna was hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Ugh. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Ugh. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day, slept at night, and ate bugs. But she still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, the curious birds decided to try it. And when Mama came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do unbird-like things. You must promise to obey the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. Soon, it was time to learn to fly. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly, too. The birds landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. <laughs> How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Stella Luna flew far ahead and was nowhere to be seen at nightfall. The three anxious birds went home without her. Stella Luna flew until her wings ached. She hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said. Why are you hanging upside down? You're a bat. You're supposed to hang by your feet. Stella Luna was confused. M Mama Bird told me I was wrong. Wrong? Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. Many bats gathered to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b -b bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. Wait, let me look at this child. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. Come with me and I'll show you where to find fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But we can't see at night. Yes, we can, said Mother Bat. We're bats. Stella Luna was afraid but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. She could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. The next day, Stella Luna brought the birds to meet her bat family. When night came, Stella Luna said, come fly with us. They all leapt from the tree. I can't see a thing, yelped Pip. We're going to crash, howled Flitter. Stella Luna grabbed her friends in the air and lifted them to a tree. She hung from a limb above them. You're safe, she said, and then sighed. I wish you could see in the dark. We wish you could land on your feet, the birds replied. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different? and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. 
And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna. But we're friends, and that's a fact. Wow. There are over 800 different kinds of bats, and they don't all live in trees. Some prefer attics, old buildings, or the darkness of caves. Bats are creatures of the night, and every evening between dusk and dawn, these bats wing their way across hundreds of miles looking for food. Tonight, this cloud of bats will consume 250,000 pounds of insects. That's the equivalent weight of 93 elephants. Long before man walked this earth, bats filled the night skies. People used to think bats were birds, but they're not. Bats are mammals, like you and me. I'm Dr. Merlin Tuttle, and I've been studying bats for 20 years. We're about to enter Bracken Cave in Texas, where more than 20 million bats live in a world of darkness. Well, here we are. We're down deep inside the cave. This is like a big tunnel, as long as a football stadium. The ceiling of this cave is over three stories high. And everywhere around me, everything is covered by millions and millions of bats. And this is a very unique environment because the droppings from all those bats turn into ammonia. And that's why I've got this respirator on. I would die down here without protection from the ammonia fumes. But the bats, they're amazing animals. They live without any problem down here, despite all the ammonia. Let's go on now and have a look deeper in the cave. Because so many bats live in here, and their bodies are all giving off heat, it's extremely hot, sometimes more than 100 degrees. Most bats, like the freetail bats in this cave, eat insects. Let's take a look at some bats close up. Here's a mother bat. She has fur just like dogs and cats and other animals, and it's very soft and velvety. Bats are the only kind of mammal that flies. She has long, narrow wings that enable her to fly very fast at night. Her wings are just like a hand. This is her thumb. It has a little claw on it to help her climb around. And then she has four more fingers, just like we do. She can come flying up to an insect at night, curl these bones around, and grab an insect right in that little webbing in the end of the wing in order to get it to her mouth to eat. See there? Just like you use your fingers. As you can see, bats really are not dangerous animals. In fact, they're among the world's most gentle animals. But you should never pick one up like I am doing. Because any bat that you can catch is more likely than others to be sick. And any animal that's sick can be dangerous. Bats like you've just seen could soon die out unless people everywhere learn to understand them and appreciate them. They're gentle and graceful. Bats are truly masters of night flight.
Well, nighttime may be the right time for bats to start their day, but not me. I'm tired. Now, before I go to bed, there are certain things I like to do. I wash my face, brush my teeth, I pour myself a glass of water, and then I turn down the covers and fluff the pillow. And I just don't seem to get the best night's sleep unless I do them in the exact same order every night. So how about you? What is it that you do to get ready for bed? I fix my pillow and um, I close the windows because it's so cold inside. Every night I have to say goodnight to my cat before I go to bed. I have to brush my teeth, wash my face, get my blankets perfectly right. I brush my teeth, I say my prayers, and I go to sleep. Well, I kind of have to turn and turn until I get in a comfortable position. My mother comes up to bed and she tucks me in, I say my prayers, and we just like chit chat. Before I go to bed, I must make sure that the curtains are closed. Sometimes I have to turn the pillow over to get my cheek on the, um, on the cool side. I lay down my animals, I put them on my bed, and I kiss them, and I say goodnight to them, and I, go, I get into my bed myself. Once you're ready for bed, there's only one thing left to do, and that's sleep. But don't think that once you close your eyes and start to doze, your mind clicks off too. A lot more happens when you sleep than you might ever dream. One thing everyone on Earth does is sleep. Our bodies need to rest, and we get rest by sleeping. First, we find just the right position. And each of us has our own favorite. But we don't stay there all night. We move around, even though we're not aware of it. Some of us are quiet sleepers. And others are noisy. A couple of times a night, the TV in our head clicks on, and we start to dream. Sometimes we like what we dream, and sometimes we don't. We know when to wake up because our bodies are like clocks. And in the morning, when the light streams in and we've had enough sleep, we're ready to start the day. Scientists know a lot about sleep. But how did they learn about it? By studying sleep in labs like this at the New York University Bellevue Sleep Center, where Dr. Joyce Walsleben is working with a volunteer named Jessica. Did you know your brain makes signals to me when it's sleeping? Did you know that? No. Dr. Walsleben will be able to tell what Jessica's brain is doing while she's sleeping by taking a picture of it. That's what these tiny electrodes are for. They'll record the activity going on in Jessica's brain. This special cream helps the electrodes work. It also helps them stay in the right place so they don't come off while she's sleeping. Electrodes don't hurt a bit, and they go near Jessica's forehead, her eyes, chin, arms, and legs. Jessica, how does it feel to have all these electrodes on? It feels kind of weird, but interesting, too. I like it. Good. All the electrodes get attached to a connector box. It's kind of like a big plug. OK, Jessica, before we go to sleep, I'm going to plug you into the polygraph and see if all the connections are working correctly. The polygraph machine translates the signals coming from Jessica's brain and body through the electrodes and draws a picture. Now just blink your eyes for me really fast. Your eyes are moving on this graph very nicely. You have good eye signals. Can you grit your teeth for me a little bit? Just see your teeth signals. And now do it once more. 
very good. This is really cool. What's going to happen to my brain while I sleep? Well, I'm going to be able to watch your brain go through the stages of sleep from the very lightest to the very deepest and also through REM sleep when you're dreaming and your eyes will be darting all around your head, almost as though you were watching television. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay, you climb in, get comfortable. Do you like to sleep on your side or your tummy? On my tummy. Okay, I'm going to hang this up so it's out of your way. Okay. And you just get cozy and forget it's even there. Okay? Okay. All right. All set? Mm-hmm. Okay, Jessica, we're going to be able to watch you on a special television that sees in the dark. So you just get cozy and go to sleep, okay? Mm-hmm. Good night. Good night. It's about 15 minutes later, and Jessica drifts off to sleep. The graph shows her brain waves are slowing down. She's relaxing. I think we're seeing her fall asleep here. Dr. Walsleben watches as Jessica falls into a deeper sleep and can tell from the polygraph when she starts to dream. Jessica enters into the stage of sleep called REM, which stands for rapid eye movement. That's what happens when you dream. Your eyes move about very quickly. Great, it looks like she's entering REM sleep here. Okay, we have rapid eye movements. And she's dreaming. Jessica slept soundly through the night, and Dr. Walsleben recorded her brain waves and body movement the entire time. In the morning, she wakes Jessica up. Jessica? Jessica? It's time. She'll remove the electrodes and show Jessica what the polygraph recorded. So how did I do? Great. You're a real sleeping champ. You want to take a look? Okay. Well, this is when you're awake. See how active that is? Uh -huh. Let me show you the difference when you're asleep. And you get nice big waves and slower waves because your brain is sleeping. And then look what happens. What a difference. Look at your eyes. See how fast the eyes are going? Uh -huh. This is rapid eye movement sleep when you're dreaming. Why is sleep so important? Well, for one thing, it makes us function better in the daytime. And with a good night's sleep, we can study well, play better, feel good, and enjoy being awake a whole lot more. That's why scientists like Dr. Joyce Walsleben will keep on studying sleep and find out as much about it as they can. Just one more story, and I promise I'll go to bed. <laughs> How many times have you said that? Well, here are three reasons to say it again, but you don't have to take my word for it. You may think that this is crazy, but I think that bats are really cool. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at this book called Amazing Bats. This book is loaded with bat facts. It's like a little bat encyclopedia. Did you know bats are mammals and that their favorite part of the day is night? Upside down. That's the way they like to hang. Look at this bat, a vampire bat. It feeds on the blood of other animals. Yuck. This bat looks like he should be in a rock group. It's called a punk bat. Can you guess what this one's called? It's a wrinkled face bat. I'm Jared, and everything you need to know about bats is in this book. So why don't you just give it a try? Amazing Bats. Step into the night. It's a poetic story about a little girl who journeys outside to meet the creatures of the night. As we step into the night, we meet many animals. We imagine what it's like to be a skunk, a spider, or even a bat. The pictures help you feel like you're the animals. 
Look at that mouse in the leaves. Look at the light of that firefly. The pictures are so beautiful. Is it nighttime mysterious? I'm Kai, and this book helped me to imagine what it's like to be an animal and step into the night. Hi, I'm Daniel Linus, and I read a book called Sleep is for Everyone. It's packed with information you might not know. We all have our own ways of sleeping. For example, you curl up at night, but elephants sleep standing up. I guess that saves a lot of money on beds. Sleep gives your body a chance to rest. Did you know that scientists did an experiment on sleep? They stayed awake for days. They got mean, angry, and even yelled at their friends. Soon, they simply had to sit down to rest. This book tells us that every animal, including us, needs to sleep. Pleasant dreams. Ooh. Well, that's it. This is my favorite time of night when I relax, snuggle down, and go to sleep. But not until I say good night, sweet dreams, and I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon, published by Harcourt Brace and Company. Amazing Bats by Frank Greenaway, photographs by Jerry Young and Frank Greenaway, an eyewitness junior book published by Alfred A. Knopf. Sleep is for Everyone by Paul Showers, illustrated by Wendy Watson, published by HarperCollins. Step into the Night by Joanne Ryder. Illustrated by Dennis Nolan. Published by Four Winds Press. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. In uncertain times, there's no more effective way to make your kids feel good and safe than to spend time with them. We at Reading Rainbow suggest sharing a book with your family. Read for fun, read for family, read for our future. The Children's Place is proud to support Reading Rainbow. A place to grow. The Children's Place. Reading Rainbow is also made possible by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs> PBS!